Rams. So, Rams, 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 Rams. I don't know what I'm gonna say. What's up everyone? I'm back. Hang on. Let me turn off the fan. I need to turn off the fan. There we go. What's up everyone? It's been five weeks, six weeks. Haven't made a video. My baby boy is doing really, really well. But it's time to get back on it. Today, I thought what better way, my favorite ones to make, fish files. Loads of information, loads of cool stuff. So, I've come back in. We have got a wicked group of rams. Golds, electric blues, normals, and blacks, I think. But anyway, well, I'm gonna take the... <sighs> so anyway, I'm gonna turn all the lights on. As you can see, everything's still off at the moment. I'm gonna turn all the lights on, get everything woken up, get everything fed. And then I'm going to do a video on rams. I'll be back. So what is a ram? A ram is a peaceful... So I was going to shout in then. <laughs> Shouting at the camera. What is a ram? A ram... <laughs> pointing, stop pointing. So what is a ram? Now if you're here for sheep or computer parts, you're in the wrong place. But stick around because fish keeping's cool and it might get you into a new hobby. But rams are a small species of cichlid from South America. They're now commercially bred all over the globe with many, many different colour forms. So you get like electric blue, you get the German blue, you get gold, you get blacks. There's loads and loads of different colour forms available on the market. You also get a few body shapes and fin shapes now. So you do get long fin varieties and you do get the balloon ram. Now, the majority of those species are all the same, sorry, the majority of those types are all the same species. They shouldn't, in theory, be any harder to keep than the other, but one thing to bear in mind, the newer the strain, so the, the rarer it is, I suppose you would say, and the more different it is, so balloon rams and things like that, they can have differing health issues, but the majority of them should be fairly easy to keep if given the right parameters. Now, in the wild, originally, they inhabited the Orinoco River Basin. So they were in Venezuela and Colombia. They inhabit really generally slow-moving streams. Obviously, it's quite a wide area that they inhabit, so there's probably going to be a lot of different habitats. But they normally inhabit slow-moving streams, and these can be anything from clear to really black water rivers. Now, most of the habitats that they're going to live in and inhabit um, they are going to have a good amount of vegetation. So there's a fair amount of documented plants overhanging and actually in the water. Now this is going to give you a lot of hiding spaces in the wild, a lot of places for them to skulk and sort of create territory. It's also going to give you a lot of leaf litter, a lot of branches, a lot of wood in the bottom of the river. Like this one. So this is the Blackwater Aquarium that MD Fish Tanks, myself and the team set up in store. Now this would be quite a good example of a cross section of a river where the rams would be living in the wild in one of those black water sort of tributaries or streams. Loads of leaf litter in the bottom, branches coming in that sort of creating that look of roots coming in from the river bank, and a little bit of vegetation overhanging and sort of spilling down into the water. So if you wanted that natural look, this would be a good example of one that you could take and make your own in your home aquarium. Now, when it comes to water parameters, you're gonna to want to keep that water really, really clean. Lots of water changes and really soft water. You know, ideally keeping them in the sort of six to seven pH range would be ideal. They are obviously in the wild a lot, lot lower. This tank's a little bit lower as well, but yeah, keeping them anywhere from sort of six to seven should give you a stable pH. Now, when it comes to temperature, around 25 to 28 degrees should be perfect. Some people do keep them a little bit warmer, but I find that sort of mid-ground is your perfect sort of average temperature that you can keep them in. So I've just come over to find our rams so I can do a bit of footage of the rams as well. But when it comes to group sizes, generally most people will keep them in a pair. They'll have a male-female pair in their aquarium and they'll let them settle and just pair up. Some people with larger aquariums can afford to squeeze in a group. So you might get, you know, a couple of pairs or maybe one male and three, two or three females. The main thing to make sure with that is that when a pair pair up, they are going to be quite territorial and dominant towards the other fish. So it's making sure that you've got enough hiding spaces and enough breaks in the line of sight, as I'd call it, to stop them from harassing each other. Because that pair are going to be super, super territorial over their area. 
Now, rams aren't growing massive, so they're only getting to around five, six centimeters fully grown. Um, some of the color strains, some of the weird strains like balloons and long fins obviously will differ in sizes a little bit. But yeah, generally as a rule, five centimeters, which is uh, two inches roughly, I think. Yeah, two inches, I'll put it on screen if not. Uh, but yeah, roughly about two inches. Now when setting up the aquarium for your rams, you're gonna want to make sure you've got enough spaces for them to hide. These zebra daniels are going absolutely ballistic up in the top here. But yeah, you're gonna need to make sure they've got enough spaces to hide. So lots of rock work, bog wood, um, just places that they can sort of hide and get away from each other, especially if keeping a larger group. It just means, again, like I was saying earlier, that line of sight, they're not gonna be able to see each other all the time, which is a major part or a major factor in them sort of kicking off and being dominant and aggressive towards each other. Now, as we saw just a minute ago, you could go for that black water sort of look, loads of leaf litter on the bottom, maybe some seed pods and coconut shells and things like that. The good thing with that is, again, you're going to give everyone spaces to hide. Once they get in amongst that leaf litter, if a male is harassing another female constantly, she's going to be able to find somewhere to take refuge and, and chill out a little bit. And when it comes to tank mates, you're going to want to pick them quite carefully. Rams, even though they are a cichlid, they are quite a peaceful cichlid and they're quite a delicate cichlid. A lot of people suffer with them not getting enough food. So obviously where we've got them in here with some zebra danios. So those zebra danios are mega quick. They will demolish food in seconds. We're having to feed that tank a little bit more than normal just to make sure food gets through that group of danios down to the bottom where the rams are. Now, when it comes to shoaling tank mates for your rams, any smaller peaceful shoaling fish should be absolutely fine. So, you know, cardinal tetras, neon tetras, rummy noses, any of those smaller tetras would be absolutely fine. If you're not worried about it being Amazonian, zebra danios, again, like I was saying, make sure that you get enough food through them, but zebra danios, harlequin rasboras, all of those small peaceful shoaling fish are gonna be a perfect match for your rams. Now, when it comes to bottom dwellers for your aquarium and your rams, Corydorus, obviously a fan favorite um, and some of the smaller loach species will be a nice addition they're not going to get too big they're not going to get too aggressive and they're not hopefully going to compete for territory when your rams are trying to breed in a cave now the other thing to look at is sucker mouth catfish so you know the most common one the bristle nose pleco or the bristle nose catfish those guys would get on really really well with the rams you might get a few territory disputes obviously when they're trying to live in the same area but give them enough hiding spaces, enough bogwood, they should be able to all find their own individual area. Now, as with any fish, a variety of food is the best way forward. Some rams will eventually get brave enough to come up to the surface and almost feed out of your hands, but for a long time, they're gonna sit in the bottom. They're not gonna be brave enough to sort of mingle in with the shoaling fish. So get a good variety of flake foods, granular foods, maybe some sinking pellets as well. This will give them the opportunity to find A, a food that they love, and B, a food that will get to them. Now, alongside your dry foods, you could feed a good quality frozen food. They'll be readily accepted, and obviously they'll sink through the water quite quickly. Remember to defrost them beforehand, because otherwise it just sits at a lump at the top, and all your quick fish that are like sort of shoaling around the top will get to that first. So defrost your frozen food, if you're really particular about it, strain it through a net to wash out all that liquid and all that horrible liquid that they've been sat in, and then pop it in your aquarium. Now, telling males and females apart can be tricky depending on the colour form. Males will generally have spiky head. Spiky head? <laughs> males will have a spiky head. Males will have extended finish, so on that front of the dorsal fin, you'll get a larger, sort of taller spike on the front. Females will generally not have that as much. Also, females will have a pink belly. Um, when they're in spawning condition, the females get this sort of weird iridescent pink hue around their belly. Now, some forms can be trickier just because of their coloration. Obviously, the electric blues, the blacks, and the golds, because of their coloration, sometimes it can be trickier to see those sort of subtle differences. But take your time, look long enough, find someone that's willing to take the time to catch the fish out with you, and you should be good. When it comes to the breeding side of it, you're gonna to wanna to provide them with well-filtered soft water. I have had or heard some people having success in harder water areas, but as a rule, if you can provide them with that softer water, they are gonna be a little bit easier to get to spawn. Now, once provided with this, given good quality food, lots of water changes, and a clean aquarium, and places to spawn, and normally they'll get on with it themselves. You might need to sort of condition them a little bit with good quality foods, 
but they will normally get on with it. A male and female will take themselves to one side, will find a cave or a rock somewhere to hide underneath, and they will uh, do the deed, I suppose. Now the parents are protective, so they will look after the site that the eggs have been laid. Normally, two or three days, the eggs will hatch and you'll have wrigglers on the rock or on the piece of bogwood. After another couple of days, so five days in total, the baby should be free swimming and the parents should be ushering them around the aquarium. Now after the five days, once the baby's hatched, that's where you come in. You need to feed these babies or at least give them a bit of a helping hand. They are going to be very small at this point, folks, so real small feuds are key. Infusoria, that I promised I'd make a video on and it'll be coming, I promise. Um, baby brine shrimp, micro worm cultures, and maybe even some of the fry foods that you can commercially buy from fish shops. You know, you can get liquid and powdered fry foods. The more you can provide them and the more different foods you can provide them, the more likely you are to find one that works for you. So there we go, another fish file done. Hopefully I've given you enough information. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you've made it this far, I'm guessing you have. In the future, I promise I'm gonna be making more videos for you guys. It's been real fun getting back into it. I've been doing a bit of Instagram and yeah, it's really nice getting back in amongst the community after sort of five or six weeks off. As for future videos, I have got some really cool new stuff. So I've set up a tank with MD in my house. So there's a, an Awazi scaper line with Awazi filtration and a kettle light on it. I've got a nano tank being set up at home. I've got some really cool light units for that. I've got some weird animals, some inverts and stuff that have just come in that I'm hoping to do some videos on. So there is some cool stuff coming up on the channel over the next few weeks. So please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Keep interacting with me because honestly, I have so much fun making these videos. As always, I'm your host, Fish Shop Matt. Peace.